Thanks for watching tonight here on MSNBC, The Ed Show. A debate about whether torture had anything to do with getting Osama bin Laden in a moment. But first, I just want to remind you what Liz Cheney's group, Keep America Safe, what they were saying about President Obama nearly two years ago in this ad. Not enough time for decision, but plenty of time for Letterman, golf, a beer summit, more golf, vacation, and a visit to Copenhagen. If you think America's president must act to defend America instead of just talking about it. Well, here's the reality, Miss Cheney. After you made the decision to go ahead, you had like this incredible weekend. You surveyed the tornado damage in Alabama. You right. took your family to the shuttle launch. And this was all going on. I mean, you knew what was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I made the decision Thursday night, informed my team Friday morning, and then we flew off to look at the tornado damage to go to Cape Canaveral. Congratulations. To make a speech, uh, a commencement speech, and then we had the White House Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday night. <laughs> the presidency requires you to do more than one thing at a time. And now, just like her father, Liz Cheney is questioning why President Obama won't use waterboarding. When she was asked a question about so-called enhanced interrogation, she said this. These are not torture. These are techniques that we know worked. That debate is over. It worked. It got the intelligence. It wasn't torture. It was legal. All false. Let's bring in the president of the Foundation for Democracy, Defense of Democracies, Cliff May, and also former CIA officer Jack Rice. Gentlemen, good to have you with us tonight. Jack, uh, Ms. Cheney is obviously referring to waterboarding there. Uh, she says it worked. Uh, it wasn't torture. It was legal. What about that? Well, Ed, thanks for having me on the program. First of all, it was torture. And guess what? The reason the Bush administration determined that it was legal was it handpicked the lawyers who would say that it was legal and then ask them if it was. So it's not exactly shocking. But if you ask whether or not it had an impact, it did. It had a negative impact. I'm quite confident, like your prior guest, uh, Matthew Alexander, that in fact it made this much more difficult. It took much longer. And I think Osama bin Laden would have been found earlier, but for the fact that torture was involved and what it did throughout the Middle East. Cliff, would you defend waterboarding on all the points that Liz Cheney made? I'm going to defend my own position, if you don't mind, Ed. Sure. I'm going to start with this. Sure. And that is to say, look, in, in this particular instance, we do know that the seed of intelligence that l brew the vine that led us to find Osama bin Laden came about through coercive techniques of interrogation. In one instance, waterboarding, in the other two instances, sleep deprivation and probably psychological humiliation. A second, I think it's important to have a little context here, and that is thousands of combatants have been taken into custody. About 100 have ended up in the CIA program. About 30 of those have suffered any um, coercive, enhanced interrogation techniques. Only three individuals have been waterboarded. I also think it's important that, to note that General Hyden, who is the head of the CIA, said that more than half of the intelligence that we've gained about al-Qaeda and its structures and its processes came from these enhanced interrogation methods. And one more thing that I think should be talked about, because it's an outrage, and I think both of you will agree with me, right now the interrogators, the CIA interrogators, who carried out this work and did so in the belief that what they were doing was lawful, it was authorized by the Justice Department, they faced the threat of prosecution. That threat should be removed. They contributed to the outcome that we saw. They contributed to, a, a, to a President Obama's greatest victory. How do you feel about they that, Jack? They should not be prosecuted for that. Jack, how do you feel about that? More importantly, I would go after the people at the top of the proverbial heap who did this. I would talk about the lawyers who actually said that it was okay. I would talk about anybody all the way up in the, into the White House who actually said that torture was legal. It Jack, was how about not, answering the question? Not. How about answering the question, question about the interrogators? That? Should the interrogators be oh, oh. prosecuted? They, thrace, they face the threat of prosecution from Eric Holder right now. It seems to me they relied on the memos produced by the Justice Department. Happy to discuss those memos with you if you like, because I disagree with you no, on that too. I, I, but I, never mind who you want prosecuted. Should the interrogators be prosecuted? I want to go through it right now. Yes. Stop with the, How's the that? answer that yeah. one question no, first. No, no, no. You want, you want an answer? Let him Here's talk. your answer. Cliff. The answer is yes. And the reason it's yes is this. As a former prosecutor myself, as a criminal defense attorney, you prosecute them in the first place 
place. And what you can do is you can give them essentially a minimal slap on the wrist so long as you work your way up the chain and you go after the people who are responsible for this outrage in the first place. This is not just about what happened to these three uh, people who were interrogated. It's about the danger that it was caused, the Americans who were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan because of these ridiculous policies. Well, and frankly, the fact that it took as long as it did to get, get Osama bin Laden and the dangers that are still in place you, because of the foolish policies of the administration. Okay. A, a top U.S. interrogator spoke with Forbes magazine recently, and for security reasons, he couldn't give his name. Uh, he has interrogated high-value targets in Gitmo, in Iraq, and in Afghanistan, where he is stationed right now. He said this, waterboarding and or other coercive techniques did nothing to contribute to our attempts to track down Osama bin Laden. Uh, what did succeed was weeks, months, years, diligent, uh, laborious, and also dedicated work, all within the bounds of legal and ethical boundaries. Cliff, what's your response to that? Well, at least three named, I know who I can name, directors of the CIA would say that's wrong. Let's understand how this and how we found bin Laden. It may, it's worth 10 seconds to go over it. There were three people. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is to start, and he was one of the three individuals who had been waterboarded. And at a certain point, he became not just cooperative, but rather talkative. And during his talks, he mentioned the nickname of a courier that bin Laden trusted. And a very smart CIA analyst said, you know what, if we have the nickname, maybe we can find the real name. If we have the real name, maybe we can find him and maybe he'll lead okay, us to bin Laden. Okay, I think America has followed happened. that story. But why didn't the Bush administration work on it uh, when they well, got that? And, and well, why, why did well, they disband the bin Laden team? It's been, well, the bin Laden team didn't accomplish a whole lot, but it's been worked on for years. Bin Laden's been living in Pakistan for about six years now, actually, which is really kind of, kind of shocking. And it took the, pretty much this long, at least okay. until, I guess, last fall, to actually know where he was living and to say, okay, he's in that house. Let's put a SEAL team together and have them go to that house and, and lethally and, and, go, and go on a mission that turned out to be lethal. And I agree with you, and I'm glad you agree with me. Not everybody on the left does that killing bin Laden was justifiable. Well, certainly justified. it was the right thing to do. There's no question about it. He killed Americans. He admitted to doing well, it. Obviously, uh, it was the a, right a lot thing of to people do. On I, the left who, people no, the not left a lot of people on the left. Be, no, wait a minute I'll, now. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, You've got name. Rosie O'Donnell and you've got Michael Moore, two visible lefties. That's not a whole lot of people on the left. And, so I'm not going to let you broad brush that. I do. You talk and radio. Noam I know what liberals are saying in this country. Now, I want to ask and you this. Noam Chomsky. Cliff, and Noam Chomsky. Cliff, let me also, ask you this. Roth, the head of should Human we, Rights Watch. Should we, water, give you some more names. should we waterboard? That's not a lot of people. Don't brought I can go, I can go on if no, you, you want me to do it. Uh, should we waterboard bin Laden's wives? No, I don't think we should. Why not? Look, I don't think... I don't think we should, be, because here's the, 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 the view on that that I think most CIA interrogators would hold. You never use coercive methods if you don't need to. You only do when it's a matter of life and death or in the case of bin Laden, where you really want to get somebody who you know is planning to kill Americans. You always use other methods. But at okay. some point, do you ever use coercive methods ever, ever? Sleep deprivation? humiliation, loud music, lights on, sensory deprivation, bad food, any of that stuff, or can you never use any of and those methods? And is that the moral high ground for America, Jack Rice? Well, let's face it, bad food is not torture. Well, although well, sometimes... Well, it is right but, now, but, as you but, know. Right end, now, no, that would be... But right now, this point. right now, but, such methods are let considered me finish to the be... Point. Uh, let me finish the it point. It is, and, but you're not telling the, the truth, and you know this. Is, is that what we have to, to address is that this was boring, slow, prodding work. you got to realize it wasn't the torture that actually resulted in, in the capture, or in this case, death of Osama bin Laden. In fact, what it was was a reorganization of the CIA Counterterrorism Center, the fact that we put a ton of people on the ground in Pakistan. We did the work that was necessary. This is not... One quick fix, one uh, all of a sudden magic bullet. Rather, it is a slow process, and it's exactly what we should have been doing all along and should have been doing from 9-11 onward. Instead, we decided something else was appropriate. Thankfully, we have changed our mind, and we're looking at these professionally, which is what we should be doing. And, and one final point I want to bring up to both of you, this question for both of you. Is the, are, are the former Bush administration officials out there just to save face right now, or do they really believe that this is what we should be doing? What do you think, Jack? Oh, I think they're doing anything to try to justify the time they spent at the White House. That's all they can do. I mean, let's face it, they've been wrong so many times, sadly, in the past, that if this is their opportunity to say, see, I told you so, Cliff, even if it's not true. 
What do you think, Cliff? This always disturbs me. You see, conservatives think liberals have bad ideas. Liberals think conservatives are bad people. <laughs> of course, President Bush, of course, Vice President Cheney, of course, John Yoo, one of the attorneys who wrote the, the, the memos that said what you could and could do, what was torture and what was not. These are serious people who tried to protect America. I, I think it's terrible that you have to attack them on a personal basis like this. Nobody's I attacking think them. That, they didn't read the presidential daily briefing on August 6th, and they put <laughs> Richard Clark out to lunch. So th they didn't do everything they could have done. Cliff May, Jack Rice, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much.